The year is 2007, the world is heading into financial ruin, but Intel released one of their best ever processors, the Core 2 Quad Q6600, which just so happens to be my first ever processor, so let's see how it gets on. Intel's Q6600 is one of the first ever quad-core processors released to the market, and it's built on the 65 nanometer process, which seems pretty ancient by today's standards. Anyways, its four cores are clocked in at 2.4 gigahertz, but Intel left a lot of headroom in this processor, unlike some of their modern ones where it's kind of landed them in a bit of hot water. And it's built on the LGA775 platform, which is one of the best platforms ever released. It supports both DDR2 and free memory, and we're going to be using the former today. Slotting the Q6600 into the Asus P5Q, which is one of the best motherboards for the time, and it's a great overclocker from what we're going to see in a minute. And then applying our new thermal paste of choice, Thermal Grizzly Juranaut, which performs pretty well. I'm mentioning good performance, we're going to have quite a lot of cooling headroom with the Noctua NHD 12L, and it's a good thing we do, because I've overclocked the Q6600 to 3.6 gigahertz at 1.5 volts, and we've got 400 on the FSB at a 9X multiplier. Pair this with eight gigabytes of DDR2 clocked at 801 megahertz, two Samsung SSDs, and a GTX Titan, we've got a well, a very high-end gaming PC for 2007 as the Titan's like a high-end GPU from 2013, six years after the fact. Anyways, it will allow our Q6600 to stretch its legs, especially at 1080p, which is our resolution of testing today. Also, we're using Windows 11, not Windows 7 or anything, because it's not really supported anymore. And the latest Game Ready driver has been used for the GTX Titan. With that being said, let's see how it gets on. <music> Just a bit of a disclaimer before we get into the benchmarks, the gameplay is a bit laggier on the recording because Nvidia in their infinite wisdom don't allow you to install GeForce Experience anymore and the Nvidia app isn't supported on Kepler graphics cards so I can't use the NVENC encoder with Nvidia software. So we've had to do CPU encoding today which hits performance quite a lot, but, but this loss of performance isn't reflected in the benchmarks. Starting off with Rainbow Six Siege, and yeah, the performance is relatively solid, all things considered. Yes, we're not getting 60 FPS, and the 1% low is looking rather questionable, but it's playable, just not on a competitive level. However, frame rates in the 50 FPS range are pretty acceptable in Skyrim Special Edition. It defaulted to the Ultra preset, so I was like, yeah, let, let's, let's just go for it. And uh, to be fair, the performance is not bad at all. The GTX Titan is definitely stretching its legs quite a bit, even though it is slightly being held back by the Q6600. So I guess I was expecting worse in Skyrim. Even then, the 2011 launch might get better frames. The one game I always used to play on my Q6600 was Minecraft, albeit it was a much older version, which was probably quite a bit easy to run. Anyways, 370 FPS on average is really good, especially with a Sodium mod. I recommend every single Minecraft Java player to install this. But where things do start to go downhill a bit is when you're loading in new chunks. As we can see from the rather low 1% low compared to the average frame rate, we were seeing quite a few dips and this is when we were loading new chunks. So if you had your will for quite a bit and you explored a lot of the terrain i think these dips will start to reduce in frequency but they're still there so this is something to look out for no such downsides are present in portal 2 as performance here is just absolutely brilliant across the board 171 fps on average with a an okay one percent low of 88 what more can you ask for you can play this valve classic with basically no problems on a Q6600 and even then the GTX Titan was being held back a bit so if you wanted to pair it with a much less powerful graphics card you could still get away with that as well. Despite being above the minimum spec for GTA 5 the Q6600 really does not have a good time in this game. Admittedly we use the high settings here with all of the population sliders and all that sort of stuff set to the absolute minimum. Even then with all those sort of fixes GTA 5 is definitely not playable because 31 FPS doesn't seem too bad. The 1% lows however of 17 aren't 
brilliant. As you can see from the gameplay, things weren't loading in at all. Like, we were just missing so many textures. To be fair, this could be down to me selecting the very high textures, which was probably not a good option because the CPU is going to do a bit more work there. So that could be why you were seeing missing textures and just missing models and that sort of stuff in GTA 5. Next up is Half-Life 2. This is the only game on today's list which is older than this processor and yeah, I think we can tell by the performance. 244 FPS on average with 98 FPS for the 1% loan. Yeah, th this just signifies that you're not going to be having any problems playing this game and who would have thought anyways? A Q6600 was an absolutely beastly CPU in 2007 and Half-Life 2 predates this by a couple of years so there's not going to be any problems there. Left 4 Dead 2 was definitely playable today, but it was giving the Q6600 a bit of a run for its money. As we can see, the average frame rate is looking pretty decent at just over 100 FPS, but the 1% lows at 42. Yeah, they're not the best in the world. This is because there's a lot of zombies, so there's a lot of NPCs and that sort of thing, and it was giving the Q6600 quite a hard time, especially in this apartment office sort of level, to be honest. I'd I don't know what it is, it's just the first mission, I think. So, yeah, this is one thing to look out for, but Left 4 Dead 2 is still playable, thanks to Valve's optimization. I don't think I'd be crazy for saying the Q6600 doesn't hold up even with a hefty overclock. After all, this is really not that much of a surprise as it is an 18-year-old CPU, and it's also lacking quite a lot of modern features like AVX and SSE for support. So if you wanted to play anything modern on this CPU, you're not going to because it just simply will not launch due to the lack of instruction sets, modern ones at least. And even then, if it did launch a game that was somewhat modern, what are four aging cores going to do on a 65 nanometer node? Probably not a lot. Like imagine playing something like Stalker 2, which is a notoriously CPU demanding game on a CPU from 2007. Anyways, that's all well and good because the Q6600 can still play some absolute gems of video games. Look at Skyrim Special Edition, this performed relatively decently on the CPU. Yes, we weren't really getting 60 FPS locked all of the time, which is okay because this CPU predates Skyrim Special Edition by eight years I'd like to say. And because of this, I reckon if you were to play the 2011 launch of it, which is no longer available, you'd probably have a slightly better time on the CPU. And Valve are the absolute kings of optimization. Half-Life 2, Portal 2, and Left 4 Dead 2 all perform brilliantly on this chip, which to be honest, isn't really that much of a surprise to me as they all launch in the same era as the CPU. So that's not really going to be a hard task for this processor. But if you wanted to play some Valve games with a relatively competent graphics card at the time, it's more than doable. And then lastly, we've got Minecraft, which is somewhat playable because of one major reason, the chunk loading. If you're rendering new chunks, you're going to be seeing massive, well, dips in performance with the Q6600 as all four cores are going to be saturated. However, all testing today was done with a new world. So if you've been playing, you've, if you've been playing on your world for quite a few months and you've explored quite a lot, I suspect you won't really see that many issues. And when you pair that with the fact that some settings in Sodium allow you to change the thread optimization, you might be able to get away with the Q6600 on modern versions of Minecraft. Like when I played Minecraft on the CPU, it was like 1.5.2, a pretty old version. So, as for CPUs go, the Q6600 is an absolute gem. It's a tinkerer's dream as out of the factory, this thing was like kind of underclocked to be honest because 2.4 gigahertz was really not pushing this CPU at all. Like we've seen today, we got 3.6 gigahertz out of it and I've seen some people get even four gigahertz out of it while pushing the voltage quite high at like 1.65, which I didn't really want to do considering the age of my Q6600. I've had it since around 2013-ish, and even before then it was in like some office PC. 
and I just really didn't want to push it, especially with the fact that it's been in storage for around 12 years now and it's even been dropped on like the kitchen floor and that, but I think that goes to show how much of a tank old processors like this are. It's just basically indestructible. It's like the Toyota Hilux of processors. Binding this with its relatively solid performance, especially for 2007, and a few years ahead of that, the Q6600 is definitely one of the best CPUs ever made, and I'm proud to say it's my first ever gaming chip. So, if you want to see some more retro processors get tested, you've got a video up there for that. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one.